What's up, guys? Haven't made a video in a while. Been busy doing some stuff, career change, different things going on. But um, got in an accident with the truck. Just haven't really been in uh, everything like I'm used to doing. But uh, I'm going to make a video for you guys today talking about why you shouldn't run wide wheels on your truck. So I've had these 26 by 14 with two inch spacers on the truck for going, this will be my second year with them on. And it looks really, really good. I love the look of it. Like I've just always been a huge fan of that big wide stance on the trucks. But I guess it depends if you have a 2500, like a F250, a Ram 2500, or you're putting them on a 1500. It will make a big difference being the straight axle because they can actually handle the bigger wheels, wider wheels a little bit better. But being a 1500 with a setup like this, it looks super good. But my number one complaint is I've had to do upper control arms. This is my fourth set of upper control arms in a year. This is my Ard, this is my second set of lower control arms. It uh, won't focus, but those are actually the wrong ones. Those are for a fourth gen. They sent me the wrong ones when I was rebuilding the truck, but I have a brand new set inside. So that'll be the third set of lower control arms on this truck. And the truck only has 60,000 miles on it. Also, another thing is the wheel bearings. I'm, hold on. I'm already on my second set of wheel bearings at 60,000 miles, which I guess for 1500 isn't terrible, but all that stuff starts to add up, you know? Lower control arms for a decent set, you're looking at close to 400 bucks a piece, so that's 800 bucks. Upper control arms, ball joints, if you do decent, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks adds up. I just put OEM ones back on it because I was tired of replacing the ball joints out of the, I had some rough country ones and the ball joints blew out every six months. So I was just over that, put some OEM ones back on it. They're only, they're made of plastic, which kind of sucks, but you know, they hold up long enough for what I need them for. So what I would say if I got another 1500, I would do a leveling kit, some wheels and tires, maybe like a 22 by 12, 22 by 14, maybe, but it's just a lot of stress on the front end, especially these trucks. It's IFS and it's not, they're not meant to be having that big of a wheel on it or stick out that far for that instance. It's just a lot of extra pressure on it, everything in the front end, but you know, it looks really good. So it's, you know, to each their own, it's up to you. Everyone is different, but yeah, those are just a couple, I mainly the front end. It's been, I mean, everyone who's ever ran a set like this would be their only complaints on it because it looks really good. Another thing I will say is don't get cheap tires if you do this wide of a wheel because they wear very weird. And I have the Venom Power tires right now and I'm not happy with them. One, they hydroplane like crazy, which you're gonna, with a super wide wheel, you're gonna get that regardless. But they just wear very odd. The outsides wear a lot faster than the insides and I always check the tire pressure, make sure they're all good and everything and they just don't hold up. Maybe I'll make another video just on the tires and stuff. But yeah, another, uh, I do wish I would've went with forged wheels too. I think I'm gonna sell this setup. I might put the truck back to stock and just actually drive it until it makes sense to build a big truck. Cause daily driving this thing is sweet cause of all the attention you get everywhere you go. But man, is it not practical for fuel mileage and everything. Like when this truck was stock, it got 17, 20 miles to the, per, to the gallon. Now I'm getting, you, you can see right here, I'm getting 10.4. It's just not, it's just not good. 
it's just expensive especially in the economy we're in right now like trying to own a big truck like this and save money or do anything it just it's hard because the truck is constantly needing stuff done to it constantly it's a never-ending battle and i just got in that accident so the truck's got to get fixed again and there's still more i want to do this truck and it's really cool having a huge 1500 because you don't see a lot of them today but it's just hard it's really the maintenance is very expensive you're doing stuff this truck should never need any of that until at least a hundred thousand 150 thousand miles and it, i've had to replace all of it multiple times so it just gets annoying with a diesel you could go a lot longer and not have to replace that kind of stuff but yeah thank you guys for watching i know it's kind of boring just me talking but it's a couple reasons why i would really think about maybe going with a 12 wide or a 14 wide with no spacers if you really want to do it but i would if i did it again i would on a 1500 i would not go this wide but thank you guys for watching hope you have a good one and i'll see you guys on the next video i got a lot of stuff coming this summer maybe another truck build i bought a pit bike hopefully buying a razor soon so yeah catch you guys in the next one